Hello biology students and welcome back to another explanation video of our Cricut Lab. This is day two, so happy Tuesday. So today we are going to be taking a look at part B, data and evidence. So the data collection phase of our scientific method, which will be shown on our virtual lab. So yesterday, recall on Monday, that we went ahead and defined our variables we figured out our hypothesis and our guiding question for the lab. So today we are going to go ahead and design a data table to record our evidence. And we wanna make sure to record data as we go because the website doesn't work well if you use the back button. So this isn't gonna be so much relevant for us because we are only going to pick one variable, one independent variable to study and take data on. So as you look down at your data tables, there's only one table you need to fill out. The other ones have all been done for you because these other four independent variables were determined not to have an impact on cricket chirp rate. You see 148 chirps per minute stays the same no matter if you change those variables. So we're gonna fill in just this data table today. All right, so Let's go ahead and look at which one we're gonna choose. So if we go ahead and go over to our collecting information, we already did that. We learned about the info. So we wanna formulate a, a hypothesis. Formulating a hypothesis is a key step in the scientific method. All right. So recall that we are going to choose air temperature. So we want to know how air temperature, or if air temperature, we should say, impacts cricket chirp rate. We think it does, but we don't know for sure until we run the experiment. So let's click air temperature. You have selected air temperature as your independent variable. This means you will test the effect of different air temperatures on the frequency of cricket chirping. All right, so our question here, pay attention to this, this is important. Should atmospheric pressure, humidity, number of crickets nearby, and wind speed be varied in this experiment? So remember that we only want to change one thing. We only want to change one independent variable. So for changing temperature, we can't simultaneously change any of these other things. So none of these should be varied. They should all be the same, which we call controlled variables or constants, if you recall. So no, we do not want to vary these. Good, these conditions need to be kept constant. These will be our controlled variables, all right? And this is essentially what values they are held at throughout the experiment. Now that you have established your hypothesis and know your controlled variables, click next to proceed with the experiment. Perform the experiment. This experiment will be conducted in the GCC biology lab where all of the environmental factors can be controlled. The values for the control variables have been set to the standard values shown in the make your hypothesis section, but you need to set the value for your independent variable. So we need to set a temperature value. You picked air temperature, so you need to select the air temperature you use in the experiment. All right, so we want to go ahead and select an air temperature. Now I wanna just take a pe quick peek where I started. So I chose to start with an air temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. You can choose any value between five and 45 degrees Celsius. That would be kind of how the temperature fluctuates in a given day for the cricket. So 10 degrees Celsius. All right, let's see how fast he's chirping. He is chirping at 40 chirps per minute. All right, so go ahead now and complete this table. And I will first kind of go ahead and go back a little bit, circle back and explain kind of how our, our graph setup is, and we'll go back to that table in a second. Okay, so generally we are going to place certain variables in certain places on our data table. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you how I've set that up here and how I would like you to set it up. Um, so generally variables 
are placed in certain points, um, we like to have our independent variable on the x-axis, what we are actively changing, which is going to be air temperature. So go ahead and fill in air temperature on your sheet. So independent, dependent, air temperature. And then for our dependent, that is going to be what we're measuring that responds to our change. So that's cricket chirp rate that will go on the Y axis. So go ahead and make sure that you distinguish what's gonna be on the X, what's gonna be on the Y variables, and then fill in this small table. And then it will go ahead and ask you to write it out in a written format. Titles for data tables and graphs have a specific format. So our Y axis, as we said, it's going to be that cricket chirp rate and our x-axis, our independent variable, is going to be that air temperature. All right. So now that we have completed this part, we can go down and look at our data. So we know that when we chose an air temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, we got a cricket chirp rate of 40 chirps per minute. So make sure on your table that you go ahead and put your variables in the correct column. So air temperature is going to go ahead and be measured in degrees Celsius. And then we want to go ahead and put those values in that column. And then cricket chirp rate, our dependent variable, is going to be measured in chirps per minute. So make sure you put that data in the correct column. So as you follow along on, on yours, you would go ahead and do the same as I am doing right here. So let's test another one. And it's going to be important here that we do the same increments. And what that means is if we go up by, by five the first time and go to 15, then we should go up by five the second time, go to 20. That'll make our line graph more easy to scale or just visually how it will look. All right, so we can think about what conclusion we draw from this. So that is a fairly low temperature fairly low chirp rate. Do you want to repeat the experiment with a different air temperature? We definitely should, because remember, on our table, we have room for five different values. So we want to take five different measures. We only have one as of now, which would be that 10 degrees and 40 chirps. So temperature would go here. And then chirp rate would go here. Chirps per minute. So that's how we want to set that up. So make sure you're following along there. All right, next up, we do want to repeat it. And let's go ahead and do 15. So let's increase our temperature and see if our chirp rate goes up or down. Oh, it went up. Cool. It went up by 36. It went up to 76. So on our data table, make sure we fill in our degree Celsius temperature value and then our chirp rate. I could go ahead and put in here um, degree Celsius, which is kind of abbreviated as that C with a degree symbol. Um, all right, so let's get another measure. So what conclusion do we have here? We keep increasing it and the chirp rate keeps going up. Let's see if that trend will continue. All right, 20. Now it looks like that rate's going up. Yep, 112. All right, so we got 20 degrees Celsius, 112. And then if we do another one, so we want to do two more, 25. Beep, 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 going fast. All right, so that was 25, and I looked a little bit too quick. 148. So that, remember, was our kind of our standard temperature that was measured at the beginning of this experiment. So we're now at our standard, and let's try to go up to 30. So yes, we do want to repeat it one more time. 30 degrees Celsius, beep, 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 even faster, 184, 30 degrees, 184 chirps per minute, 84, okay. So... Notice all of your other data has been completed already, so there's no need to, to go and test other variables, but if you wanted to, you could. So you don't have to repeat with a different air temperature once you get all five. 
You don't have to repeat the experiment with a different hypothesis, so you'd click no. If you were to click yes, it would take you back to this menu and have you select another one. But we already know these other four don't have an impact. So we can go ahead and just kind of zoom through. Zoom through here, and you'd go ahead and not do another value. No, no and then draw your conclusion. So this will be where we leave off for today, which is Tuesday on part B. So make sure you have completed your data tables and that will then carry us into part C graphing. Watch for that next video on Wednesday and the video will be posted. So if you'd like to get a head start on it today. All right, everybody, take care, bye.